FinFET. You have probably already heard about it, but do you even know what a FinFET is? FinFET is a type of field effect transistor, but with fins. It is a transistor with a 3D architecture that uses a raised channel, the fin, between the source and the drain. FinFETs are virtually everywhere. They are the basis of nanoelectric semiconductor devices. There are almost certainly billions of them in the device you are using to watch this video. They are present in smartphones, processors, laptops, video cards and also in storage devices like SD cards and SSDs. But what really is a transistor? The word transistor comes from the combination of transconductance and varistor. Varistor is a type of electric component where the resistance varies according to the voltage that is being applied. A transistor is a semiconductor device that is used to amplify or switch signals and power. Switch. Switches are used to control the flow of electricity. With them you can build logic gates that are used for computing. It all started with thermionic valves, used to build the first digital computers in the 40s. But tubes were slow, took a lot of space, needed a lot of power and unreliable. Imagine the hassle to keep such a computer running. Around this time, the first transistors started to be developed. The point contact transistor, with a rather flimsy design. Soon, the first computers using transistors started being built, making them more compact and using much less power. The Manchester TC transistor computer was one of the first computers using transistors, with 92 point contact transistors. A few years later, bipolar junction transistors appeared, which had a slightly more robust design and are still relevant for many applications. An improved version of the Manchester TC was built with 250 junction transistors, probably bipolar. But in the same period, field effect junction transistors appeared. Their manufacturing was a bit difficult because of the higher complexity. In the late 50s, the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor was invented, the MOSFET. This was the first really compact transistor that could be miniaturized and mass produced for several applications. A few years later, the integrated circuits, the first chips, appeared, and soon MOSFET integrated circuits achieved a higher density of transistors and lower manufacturing cost than bipolar transistor chips. In 1965, Gordon Moore made the famous prediction that the density of components in a chip would double every year, which a few years later was revised to double every two years that is, an exponential growth in the density of integrated circuits. Moore's law is still alive today, but the industry is facing increasing challenges to keep up with it. But back to the history here, in the early 70s the first microprocessors appeared, where basically all the logic of a computer with thousands of transistors was inserted in a single chip, so the computers became much cheaper and more accessible. Intel started with the 4004, a 4-bit microprocessor that had 2300 transistors on a chip of only 12 square millimeters. A year later, Intel launched the 8008 with 8 bits and 3500 transistors. And in 1978, it was released the famous Intel 8086, a 16-bit processor with 29,000 transistors that gave birth to the x86 architecture, which is still supported in processors nowadays. In the 80s, the first FinFET type transistor was invented, but at the time it was called Delta. A more refined control of the transistor operation was observed. In the 90s, new transistors of the same type started to be studied and developed, but in deep submicron size, below 100 nanometers. In 1998 was developed the N-type transistor with 17 nanometers and in the following year the P-type smaller than 50 nanometers. But the term FinFET was defined only in the early 2000s, being developed transistors increasingly smaller, reaching 3 nanometers in 2006 with the gate all around type. And in 2011 the first FinFETs arrived in Intel processors and in 2014 were already being produced in all major foundries like TSMC, Samsung and Global Foundries. Now in this year of 2022 we start the era of GAA FETs, the gate all around field effect transistors. 
but with more complex geometry and in a few years they will become mainstream too. Further ahead, probably new transistor geometries will appear, much more complex and compact than the current ones. The channels are getting bigger and bigger. Well, after this summary of the history of transistors and computers, there are still questions. How does a FinFET work? In a simplified way, when a voltage is applied to the gate, the electric field causes the electrodes in the depletion zone to be pushed towards the substrate, thus allowing or blocking the passage of current from the source to the drain. The process works basically the same way as in MOSFETs and has a lot to do with how semiconductors work, where parts are doped to have more free electrons and others have holes. In the regions where they come in contact, there is a recombination of the free electrons with the holes, called the depletion zone, where the conductivity drops a lot. With the electric field applied to the gate, we can manipulate these regions and change the conductivity, thus forming a switch. To better understand the subject, I suggest reviewing semiconductor materials and how diodes work. Back to the FinFETs, why are they so interesting for the semiconductor industry? Compared to planar MOSFETs, with better control, having less leakage currents, it is easier to build transistors with more than one gate, and in general, it has a better behavior. As you can see, there are several advantages that led to FinFETs to dominate the market in the last years. And how can we build this kind of transistor? It is a relatively simple process to understand, but it has several steps. Fortunately, I found a neat recipe. First, we will need a high purity silicon substrate, lightly doped with a P-type doband and hard mask layer on top. The resist is little graft, similar to a photo developing process, where a pattern is drawn on the surface. After that, the material is removed from around the fins by a chemical process. Then a layer of oxide is deposited to insulate the fins, and then the layer is leveled. Part of the oxide is removed, and then a new layer is formed to insulate the gate. Finally, the gate is deposited on the fins, and the transistor is ready. And to do all this, you will only need 99.9999% pure silicon wafers, a super clean environment, masks, photoresist and other chemicals for etching. And of course, a lithography machine that in some cases cost over 100 million dollars. Very simple, anyone can do this in their own kitchen. And so we have the FinFET. A component that is everywhere and has a really big impact on our lives. But it is so small that we cannot even see it using an optical microscope. To give you an idea, the diameter of a hair strand is thousands of times bigger than a transistor of this type. This is one of the most advanced technologies of our time. The level of precision required in these processes is out of this world. That makes me wonder what else we can make in the future.